Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this tutorial, tutorial number six, we're going to review the recovery of a schedule in Microsoft Project. Some of the things that you need to think about and your approach. In tutorial five, we reviewed how to update a schedule and there's a, a number of uh, things that you need to know in the updating process. So if you haven't uh, seen that or you're not sure of it, uh, please go to my YouTube channel, Tom Stevenson, and look for tutorial number five, and that'll go through the complete updating process. Uh, as a quick review, uh, key points to updating a project are that we have to have a status date, and uh, the status date can be entered from the project tab uh, where it says status date or the other place is go to project information and enter the status date over here. The status date is the date that you are updating the schedule to. So that means that it should be at least this date or within a few days of this date. You don't want to update a schedule that you know happened a month ago. You want to update it as close to the time period that it comes across as possible because your information is more fresh, it's more accurate, you're less likely to uh, make a mistake or a wrong entry uh, because it, it, it's pretty much intuitive to you at that point. So essentially in Microsoft Project, one of the other things that we looked at when we were updating was to slide all the way to the left. Big part of this is being able to orient yourself what screen you're in. And currently I'm in the tracking Gantt screen. The tracking Gantt shows the bottom bar, which is the darker bar there. And the bottom bar is the baseline schedule and the top bar is the update or what's currently happening on your project. And the difference between the bottom bar and the upper bar is giving you the variances. So um, re in reviewing your schedule, that's always important and it's helpful. It's also helpful to go to where I go, the square icon box there as I call it, right click. And in this case, I'm in the variance screen. And the variance screen tells me what's the difference between the start and the finish that I had been working on these on these activities. So I can see that I started this activity here, this first act, the second activity, uh, rough in HVAC walls, one day late, and I finished it two days late. And it's all in working days. It's always in working days. And so that tells me that something made us start one day late and that our duration was one day longer than we expected. So once we know that information, uh, it's helpful because we can document why did we start one day late? Why did we finish two days late? And the other thing that I mentioned is it's always good to, I'm gonna go to the entry screen. It's always good to put notes in your activities when you're updating, what happened? Why did it? Uh, delay. So in this case, I double clicked on the activity. It brings up the task information box. And again, you can go to earlier tutorials. We talk about this. And I clicked on notes and I typed in rough in plumbing delayed due to design layout error by consultant. So at that point, I would have that logged in and I would remember why uh, we were delayed. That's a very important one to document it. If we didn't cause the delay, there might be claims against us or we might want to make a claim or we want, might want to get a change order approved as a result of the delay. Uh, all of these things uh, come into play. So as you do it, it's easy to document it because as I said, it's fresh in, in your mind. Six months from now, it's going to be very difficult. You're going to be going back to journal entries. If you've got them, you're going to be trying to extrapolate what happened. So if you have uh, this data entered, uh, then it's it's there and that'll help you when you do a formal update to the client on what's happening uh, on the status of their project. So we have uh, that information pretty uh, clearly entered. We have our uh, status date as I, I mentioned and to enter the information we've been entering that information under the tracking screen. So I click on the square icon box, I right click my mouse and I go to the tracking screen, and that's where actual starts and actual finishes have been entered. Uh, we also talked about uh, under the task tab, entering the uh, mark on track. If you highlight something, it'll update that activity up to the status date. So that's helpful. 
We also moved rough and plumbing because it never happened before the status date. So now it's got to be rescheduled and you'll see the impact on the rest of the schedule as a result of that. So essentially we have our updates. We know how much we're behind. And if it was, if we were doing a cost loaded schedule, we'd even see the variances in costs. Like right now it's $5,040 more. And that's based on the project taking more and any variable costs or variable resources that we might have used uh, that they're there longer now, like a site super, a project manager that might be on the project a lot longer, that would be a variable cost, then that would be um, going up those, that price. And if we wanted to see it individually, we could always take the tracking uh, slide to the left where it says tracking Gantt, right click, and we could go to our resource sheet and if the resource sheet is in the cost view, which it is right now, usually it's in the entry view, but if you wanted to see the cost view, then you can see what's the baseline cost and what's the current cost and what's the variance. So you get to see what's the variance uh, in those um, particular items now on your budget. So your budget would have been your baseline cost. And this is now that the project's running longer, it's costing more. You also will show actual costs incurred up to that point uh, by the individual resources. So that would be based on how you structured the resources. And we talked about that, I think, in tutorial four. And this is the remaining work that's left to be done. And this is the costing for it based on what you originally entered in the baseline schedule. These haven't been, uh, this one hasn't been even uh, approached yet. So that's why it's still at full price. So I'm going to slide back and I'm going to go right click and I'm going to go to my uh, Gantt chart. And in the Gantt chart, uh, I can now uh, start thinking about the updating process. So we can clearly see that we're six days behind schedule. And that's because we have a, had a complete network. We had all the activities connected. Uh, according to how we wanted to run our project. And then when things change, uh, it's adjusting the entire network. So it changes all of the dates and the critical path. The critical path is the longest path through your project. And the critical path now is being extended. So anything that's in red, in this case, I think they're pretty much all in red to the end. Nope, there's one that's got float. So this activity has float. Anything that's in red is getting pushed. This has float. These are getting pushed by uh, the critical path activities based on the schedule logic that we put in place for this entire uh, schedule. So the critical path is the longest path through the project and it will show what our delays are based on the updates that we made, which is great because now we know uh, how much we're delayed we know the status of our project, we know where we're at, and we know what work we've got left to do. We know that rough and electrical walls isn't quite finished. It's got one working day left of work to complete. So all that information is there. So everything that we've essentially been looking at has been, I'll use a drawing tool here just to illustrate it. Everything that we've been uh, doing up to this point has been looking in the past. Right? So that's the key thing about updating. You're looking in the past. So now that we're done with that, you know, we could save this and say, okay, we're done with the updating process. Now what I would do is I would save this file. And in another tutorial, I'll talk about file saving protocols. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. But in this particular case, I'm just going to save this file and I'm going to uh, name it. Uh, I think I've gotten out of the wrong one here. I'm just going to uh, name that and uh, go into here. Well, we'll just name it here. Uh, so I've got updated uh, schedule. Now I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this recovery schedule. Tutorial six, and I'll call it recovery schedule. So the idea here is that you would have one schedule that would show the update and one that'll show the recovery and the recovery is going to be your new plan going forward. So you could imagine if this was a construction project and it went six months, I would have six updates, one for each month. 
And if it fell behind every month, I would have six recoveries. So every month I would do an update and I'd do a recovery. If you do an update and everything went exactly as planned, you don't need to do a recovery and the plan just stays the way it is. But the whole point of uh, scheduling really is to be able to track where you are, compare to your plan, and then take decisive action to get the project back on track. And that's really, really helpful. So if you lose five or six days in a month, you're looking at how do I get that time back? How do I get that time back sooner rather than later? How do I get that time back for the low cost solution? And you play with the software. In another tutorial, I'll kind of go through this conceptually, not an MS project tutorial, but a project management uh, tutorial that I'll uh, do. Um, but really what you're trying to do is say, all right, well, we're six days behind. How do I get the six days back? And that I would then be presenting to the client so the client knows how I intend to get the project back on track. And if I've been delayed for reasons that I didn't cause, but the client caused, then I'm looking for a change order for the extra costs that might be involved because that might involve working weekends. It might involve uh, overtime. It might involve a bunch of different things to get it back on track. Uh, so that would be part of parcel of that uh, concept. And it'll help me to reschedule all the work. So it helps me uh, better implement the rest of the project because I understand what I've, how I've been impacted by what just occurred. So really what I'm saying is we were looking in history and now that's done. So what's done is done. Uh, now what we're really going to be doing is we're going to be looking to the future. So we're going to be basically only looking forward. So in this updated recovery schedule, I don't care what's happened in the past. I documented it. I listed the reasons why. I'm thinking about if something is reoccurring. You know, if I was doing a multiple story building in a construction project and one of the floors was delayed, I'd want to know, well, is that going to happen on the next floor? And how do I prevent that from happening on the next floor? What actions do I have to take so that whatever delay happened on the previous floor doesn't keep reoccurring? I want to eliminate that. So I'd be thinking forward looking, but I'm using the lessons of history, if you will, to help me in planning the future. And that's that sort of continuous uh, improvement sort of concept that you want to sort of get in your head when you're updating the schedule. So that's fine. I'm just going to delete that arrow now. And I'm going to look along the critical path because it doesn't help me to shorten things with float. This is basic. This one here is uh, the driver over here. So we've got uh, this is on our critical path right here. And we have a uh, critical path and we have the following this along. We can see where it goes. So I'm going to start thinking about how do I shorten the time? And usually what I do is I usually have my variance screen up and I usually insert a duration column in the screen. So I'm going to insert a column. We talked about this in a previous tutorial. Insert column. I'm going to type D for duration because you got to, you have to know the name of it. I don't want any of these other ones. I just want the one that's just plain old duration. That's uh, that has uh, all of the listing of numbers. And I'm going to look at rough in plumbing and I'm going to say, you know what? I don't think at this late stage I can get the plumber to shorten this. If I could, great. So if I could get the plumber to bring in two plumbers instead of one plumber and do it in two and a half days, great. But I don't think that's going to be feasible in this particular case. Then I'm going to look at inspections. Under inspections, I've got five days uh, and I might be thinking that might be difficult to shorten the inspections, but maybe I've talked to my HVAC, uh, rough in uh, electrical, plumbing subs, and they can coordinate and we can get all the inspections done in three days. So that's great. So I shortened that by two days. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, also give myself a note to say consulted with electrical plumbing and HVAC Oh, it's also the HVAC uh, subs to shorten inspections, shorten inspection time. So I give myself a note just so I'll remember what's going on. 
In this screen, I'm in the variance screen right now. It doesn't show the notes. If I wanted to show the notes, I could pop up the indicator column in here. So I could, uh, you know, just click on the task. Actually, I'll click on the task name. I could go insert column and I could go I for indicators. And now I can see any note, any places I put notes. So there would be a note under inspections, the post-it note consulted with electrical plumbing HVAC subs. There's even a notes column if you're interested. It's just that you got to kind of open it wide and it'll actually show you the printed note in the column. I find it's pretty good though if you hover over it, it'll tell you what the note is. So we've shortened that by two days and if we go to our variance screen, then we'll see that by shortening it two days, we've brought back the project that now it's only four days delayed. So I'm going to scroll along a little bit again and I'm going to see I've got board, second side, and I've got tape drywall. And I'm looking and I'm thinking about this. And it really, we talked about relationships in another tutorial. It's nine days long. So that's a long time putting all the board on, but that's how much time we need. But do we really need to wait till all the drywall is on before we start taping? That's a pretty good question to ask. Do we really need to wait all that time for the drywall before we actually start taping. And I'm going to say we don't. So what you could do is you could put a negative lag of four days to pull that back, or you could change that relationship to be a start to start relationship and have that on a positive so that essentially it's going to start five days after uh, board second side, you're going to start taping the drywall because you feel that uh, once uh, you start taping the drywall, the uh, the uh, borders, uh, the board, the tapers won't catch up to the people boarding the drywall. So those are things that you could do to resolve that issue. Now, if you uh, wanted to change the change how that looks and I don't think I've shown you this before there's a little shortcut you could go to the entry view and you could go into where it says predecessors you could put up the predecessor column uh, here you could double click here and you could go in here and you could change relationships here and lag time here if you wanted to another shortcut that I like usually I only use it when there's like one one link between one activity if there's multiple links uh, then it usually gets a little confused but you just hold your mouse and you hold it directly over the arrow you know the bar of the arrow not on the bar because it won't work then on the arrow line it brings up the task dependency box and right now you've got a uh, finish to start with board second side i could do two things as i said i could change the relationship to start to start and I could say plus five days. I'll do this once. And if I do that like that, uh, then it then it says five days after this starts, I'm going to uh, tape uh, the drywall. So five days after that starts, I'm going to tape uh, the drywall. Now you could still uh, link this open end over here to your installed T-bar ceiling. Uh, it doesn't make as much sense that way, but it's a possibility uh, to do that. What we've done though, is we put a start to start relationship in here, and that's ensuring that this would start after that many days. And then, as I said, you could uh, click on this link here. Actually, I think I'll click there on the installed T-bar ceiling. And I've got tape drywall finish to start. I could also have uh, install, uh, what do we got here? We've got the board second side and I could click OK and that would put fin close that link up over there or that loop because I always like to see them looped in case something goes wrong with this that it pushes that. Uh, so we have that uh, secured there and so essentially what we've done is we have put a start to start relationship in there and five days after uh, the drywall starts the tapers will start the tapers will not catch up to the drywallers the way this is indicated and so then before we install the t-bar ceiling the drywall should all be on and t-bar uh, the drywall tape before we start the t-bar ceiling so that makes sense to me 
The other way that I could have done it, so I'm just going to click undo for a couple of times, see if I can uh, get that uh, undone there. Okay, so we are back to where we were. The other way that we could have done it is we could have put a negative lag. So I could click on the line and I could put a uh, negative lag of four days there. And so that's pulled that back. And again, it's accomplished a similar thing, but PMP, good scheduling, best practices, uh, kind of frowns upon that. You may have contracts that might say no negative lag on your contract. This applies particularly in heavy civil and industrial projects where they'll always want you to use a start to start instead of a, uh, a negative lag or a lead time uh, like that uh, in that case. Uh, but in a lot of commercial work, I see this done uh, very frequently. So I don't want to really get into uh, if your company wants to do it this way and this is the way you've always done it. Uh, that's sort of a personal thing, but you got to make sure your contracts are clear on that. And the whole logic, as I said, is uh, you have more of control of understanding how things relate to the start of something than you have control over how they relate to the finish of something. And that's typically why uh, that's uh, not considered the best practice. But at any rate, both, both methods get you back to zero. The most fundamentally important thing is that your project now is back on track. And if I went to my tracking Gantt view right now, so if I go to my tracking Gantt, because I'm in the Gantt chart, I should see, so the tracking Gantt's on now, and I'm gonna go to my variant screen. See how quickly I'm switching between screens? That's what you wanna get used to, uh, and knowing what screen you're in. It's very, very helpful. So we can see zero days. We can follow the bars, and we can see how the bars are closing in on each other. This is going from six to four days difference. So this is four working days finish variants. And so this is four days start variance. And then as we go along, we can see how the time was brought back and now we're at zero duration. And if we follow that all along now, the bars should all line up. So we're back on track through the whole project. And that is our recovery of this schedule. That is going to now become the new updated master plan. So this is now the schedule that you're gonna follow because you've changed things. So you've changed how uh, the, uh, in, the inspections is gonna be done to, from four days to three days. And you're gonna put in here, what I would do is I would put a note under board second side, and I would say uh, discussed with uh, the drywall sub uh, to bring in their tapers, tapers four days early. So as long as you've discussed that and they've agreed to it, then you've got that as part of your new plan. So it's always good to whatever activities you changed to put a note that you've changed it and that you've talked to the party that's involved. One thing I'll tell you for sure, scheduling software can do magical things. I can always make a schedule go back on track. Uh, the problem is, can I make it go back on track in real life? So don't get all enamored by uh, scheduling software that it's gonna solve all your problems. It's going to help you to detect what you need to do in order to save the time. So it's a step-by-step -step methodical process. It's a system that you follow. It's a methodology, and once you get good at it, then it really assists you in improving uh, your techniques and improving your efficiencies and to become much more successful in managing your projects. And you know what? It's not going to be just you that feels that success. It's going to be the people around you because you're going to be less stressed and it's going to be a much more uh, collaborative uh, team to work with and you'll be much more successful as a team. So I wish you the best on uh, your uh, updating processes and we'll be back with more tutorials because to be honest, it's endless the amount of things that you can do with scheduling software. And when you tie that together with really good project management principles, systems, leadership, you'll see the results that this brings in. This is just one of many, many tools for you. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. And 
Before I forget, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, that way you'll be kept up to date with uh, new videos in the areas of project management. And if you haven't guessed by now, I do have a strong focus on the construction side of things. Although the things I've been showing you for Microsoft Project will work uh, pretty much anywhere. Have a great day.